fixing the money thing. But everyone should have a passion and a crusade. What I mean by a crusade is you have a story to tell. Everyone should be involved with, you know, everyone's in sales. Everyone's in sales, right? I mean, ladies ask, what kind of makeup do you use? I mean, everyone asks, what do you use? What do you like that? How do you like your car? Hey, how do you like that new Ford? How do you? Everyone's asking, everyone's selling. Your crusade cannot be to make you money. Money follows your crusade. Your story will produce revenue. Your vision will create employees. See, you have to have a story, a vision, and that's what God wants to give you. Everyone here is here to solve a problem. Everyone is signed to a place to occupy to be someone's answer to demonstrate the kingdom. And it's going to be your answer. It's going to be not a script you've learned. It's going to be your story, why you're there. Ask a dentist. I'm here because I'm passionate about people's teeth, about their health. Ask someone why they do what they do. I'm passionate about building this house for families. I'm passionate to be a builder. I'm passionate. What are you passionate about? What story are you talking about? You can locate yourself by listening to what you do, what you talk about. Find your passion. See, God probably has a place for you where your passion is the focal point, where your story is the story that you tell every day, where you dread Friday night and love Monday morning. Here's the thing. He said, Drenda gave me a boat for Christmas three years ago. I do like to fish sometimes. I have not taken that boat out. It's still in the barn. You say, well, I don't understand. You, she gave you a boat. You haven't even taken it out yet. You know why? When you're, when you're Quote, job is your hobby. It's hard to stop. There's nothing more exciting to me than the kingdom. I mean, yes, I'll get out. Recreation's great. But you don't live for recreation, friend. You got to find what life is. Life is the kingdom to me. I mean, the boat's there. I know I can go to it and I want to. But it's just not quite as exciting as the kingdom. I mean, I'll get there. But what I do, when it becomes my, it's a, it's a hobby and it's what I do. I mean, how does it get better than that? It's pretty, pretty amazing. So when I see people's lives change by teaching the kingdom, when I see people's eyes light up, when you tell them, yeah, you're, you're in pretty bad shape financially, but you could be out of debt in five and a half years on your current income, and their eyes go as big as saucers. I like that. I like seeing the crippled walk. I like seeing the power of God manifest. I like to see people that have no vision have vision. I like people to find life where there's life in God. I like people to see answers. That's what thrills me. That's my crusade. I believe there's a major epidemic in today's life. I believe it's purpose. I believe there's a lack of purpose. There's a major epidemic in our culture. A lack of purpose. I can prove it to you. Teenagers spend, in a recent study, an average of nine hours a day on the internet. Nine hours. Nine hours. Friend, listen. Purpose brings clarity to life. Purpose brings clarity to time, resources, and people. Let me talk about that. See, when you have purpose, it's easy to say yes and no. I'd like to, but I can't. I can't afford that time. I need to do this. I'm, this is where I'm headed. Your purpose automatically sifts who hangs around you. You're going to find you begin to operate on purpose. You're going to lose some friends and gain some friends. Right? They say you're going to be like the five friends you have. You have to answer that question. Time is a resource you only have once. And purpose is what gives definition to it. Otherwise, there's no definition. One day is the same as the last. There's no marker of accomplishment. There's nothing that says you've, you've, you've done well. Time just goes and then it's gone. And you can't get it back. Resources can do the same thing. They can kind of float away as well without realizing the impact they could have had. Resources and priority go hand in hand. Give me your checkbook, your credit card statement. I can tell you what you're, what you're in love with. I better see some Marshalls and some Nordstroms and some, if you're married on there, you know, the flower shop. <laughs> what you love is going to show up with what you spend, friend. Your heart is drawn. where Your love is evident. It's right there. Checkbook, credit card statement. Let me read you a scripture here. Jesus told this parable in verse 16 of chapter 12 of Luke. 
to the ground of a certain rich man yielded an abundant harvest. He thought to himself, what shall I do? I have no place to store my crops. Then he said, this is what I'll do. I'll tear down my barns, build bigger ones. There I'll store my surplus grain. And I'll say to myself, you have plenty of grain laid up for many years. Take life easy, eat, drink, and be merry. Now this is the song of the unbeliever. This is his only escape from the drudgery of the, you know, to nose to the grindstone existence and survival they live, is that someday if I can just get enough surplus, if I can just make enough money, then I can say peace. Then I can say take life easy. That is the goal of, of obtaining wealth outside of the kingdom of God. People are looking for an escape from the earth cursed system of slavery. So Jesus goes on and says, but God said to him, you fool, this very night your life will be demanded from you. Then who will get what you prepared for yourself? And this will be how it is for whoever stores up things for themselves, but is not rich towards God. God did not say it's wrong to have things. He says it's wrong not to be rich towards God. So money is a tool. It will focus what your objectives are. Your priorities are good. They'll show up. If you are in alignment with a purpose, they'll show up, and those things you love will show up. You have to analyze that. So number three is people. Priorities define, of course, time, redefine money, its use, and number three, the people you hang around. As I said, they say you'll be like the five best friends you have. As I said, you're going to lose some friends and gain some new ones if you're serious about a goal, and that's all right. That probably needs to happen, right? So pastor, tell me what the objective is. What is the, where is my city? What am I to take? You need to know that. Again, we talked about the place. You have to know the place. You'll never know you get there unless you know where it's at. So here's what you need to understand. Matthew chapter 28, 18, Jesus speaking. Again, we read this earlier. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you, or basically teach them about this new kingdom. You see, when a kingdom is taking something over, where you embrace, you embrace a location, a, a place, It changes the atmosphere of that place. It changes the jurisdiction of that place, the authority operating that place. It's a brand new life. And so what happens when people come into Christ, they have a brand new life. And so, yeah, we hear about letting go of the old and the deliverance from the old, but we've got to share with them there is a new way of living that so supersedes where you came from, they're not even close. The kingdom way of living, new government, new ideas, new way of life, new you, is all in front of you. We can talk about the, the devil all we want, but let's not talk too much about him. He has no, no authority over you. Let's talk about where you're going. Let's talk about what's in front of you, right? So Jesus said this, to teach people. Mark 16, 15, he said, go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. These signs will accompany those who believe in my name. They'll drive out demons. They'll speak in new tongues. They'll pick up snakes with their hands. They drink deadly poison. It'll not hurt them. They place their hands on sick people and they will get well. There's one major theme in these two scriptures and it's people. See, God's treasure is not silver and gold. His treasure is people. And he's going to send you into a place to represent him with the power of God in your destiny. Your destiny is not about you. Did you know that? It really isn't. Your destiny is really about people. Not you as a people. I mean, you're obviously there, but it's about the people who will be there around you in your place of destiny. God is all about the harvest. Now, obviously, you have to find your own personal assignment But any assignment you have, whether it be business or whatever it is, has to fit in this major outlook God has. It's about people. So let me give you a hint. Don't chase money. Don't chase money. Chase God. He'll show you where the money's at. Money follows vision. Money follows purpose. Money follows dreams. Don't chase money. You'll go down a trail that will shift and change so fast you'll be left behind. Follow a story. Follow your crusade. Follow God. Let him build your future. Hi, I'm Gary Cassie, and you will never fulfill your destiny until you fix your money thing. Visit GaryCassie.com, and don't forget to hit the subscribe button below for more amazing weekly videos on fixing your money thing 
and thanks for watching.